Let's talk about how this $200 camera still slaps in 2022. So since it's been over a year since I've used this camera, I bet you all thought that I was probably done talking about the legendary Panasonic GH3. Well, you thought wrong. So yeah, I picked up a Panasonic GH3 again, mostly because I needed a B-roll behind the scenes camera. And I was looking at my options and I just wanted something cheap, something that could just get a couple of B-roll shots, didn't need anything crazy. But what I wanted to talk about was since it's been almost like two years since I've used this camera, I kind of wanted to share my thoughts on what I think of it in 2022, now that I use a Olympus EM1 Mark II, just how I feel about this beast of a camera that I essentially built my YouTube channel with. So first off, the footage still looks perfectly fine to me. I still, even in 2022, don't necessarily think that a insanely sharp 4K image is mandatory to make short films or even commercials or even YouTube videos. You can still make really good looking stuff with something like this Panasonic G H3. It's kind of funny, using this camera again is almost like riding a bike for me. I used it so much that as soon as I picked it up, I kind of knew where everything is. I set it up exactly how I like it and everything just works flawlessly. So I really do like the feeling of this camera. These GH series cameras are a little bit more utilitarian. They don't look as retro and cool as like the Olympus cameras do, but I actually kind of like it. I think that it works. I think that it looks professional in my opinion. And I've always liked just how the GH3, GH4, and GH5 feel in my hands. A really nice deep grip and I have like relatively large hands. These ones just feel really, really good. So the main thing that I kind of wanted to test with this GH3 was the 1080p quality. Now that's something that with my Olympus EM1 Mark II, which is what I'm filming this on, it has 1080p, but it doesn't actually look that good in my opinion. And when I started filming stuff in 1080p with this Olympus, I was a little bit let down because I'm so used to the quality of this GH3. So I actually kind of wanted to put it to the test. These are some clips that I shot with both the EM1 Mark II and the Panasonic GH3 in all eye at 24 frames per second. The EM1 Mark II can shoot in a pretty high bit rate in all eye, and the GH3 shoots in 72 megabits in all eye, which is a very, good codec still and it's very easy to edit with. But both my Olympus and this GH3 shoot in IPB when it comes to 60p. So here's some clips that I shot with both cameras in 60p. And honestly, in my opinion, they look fairly similar, but I kind of like the GH3 60p just a little bit more. And as far as the 24p stuff, again, they look pretty similar, but I still just like the image coming from this native 1080p camera as opposed to dropping down the resolution on my Olympus and shooting in 1080p. So what are some things that this Panasonic GH3 does better than my Olympus? The first one is the audio preamps. The audio on this GH3 sounds way better than my Olympus. With the Olympus, you definitely have to jump through a lot of hoops and turn off a bunch of settings to get nice clean audio. With the GH3, it's just basically plug and play and the audio sounds great. And that's basically the same with every Panasonic camera. Basically you plug any mic into a Panasonic camera and it's probably gonna sound pretty good. Another thing is the menus and button layouts. I like still better on my Panasonic cameras. Now it could just be that I've only had the Olympus for a little over a year and I used this Panasonic GH3 for you know seven years or something like that. So it could just be because I have more experience with this camera, but I do just like how easy everything is to set up. I have my C1, C2, and C3 set up exactly how I used to have them before. Some things that I would miss if I was shooting with this camera again is just the resolution. As you can see in this comparison, this is the Olympus EM1 Mark II, 16 millimeter Sigma lens, and then this is the Panasonic GH3. Now I am gonna say the GH3, I still think looks pretty good for a camera that came out in you know 2012. But you can obviously tell if there's more detail on the Olympus camera. Something else that I would miss is IBIS. 
The EM1R2 has great image stabilization. It can do purely a sensor stabilizer and it can do a digital stabilizer to get even stabler footage. And that's been really nice shooting like run and gun stuff because with my Olympus, I don't really have to bring a gimbal. Whereas with my GH3, there is no image stabilization. You have to run it on a gimbal or use an image stabilized lens. And finally, the thing that I would miss the most if I was ever going back to a camera like this from my Olympus is the autofocus. Autofocus on Panasonic cameras, even to this day, is not good. Panasonic continues to use contrast detection based autofocus, so it just isn't very accurate. And even the cameras that do it well, like the Panasonic S5 and the Panasonic G9, still do not do it as well as my Olympus EO1 Mark II. I set up a little scene with both the GH3 on the Sigma 30 millimeter and the Olympus on the Sigma 30 millimeter. And you can just see how well the Olympus camera works with its phase detection autofocus. Whereas the Panasonic with its contrast based detection autofocus, it's hunting. And even when it does find my face, it still is gonna pulse back and forth because it just isn't quite certain that it's found the right focusing point. Whereas the Olympus works flawlessly and it's essentially like a Sony camera. Something else that I've discovered with this GH3 is in the past, I had always shot in natural, the natural color profile, and I turned all of the contrast and saturation down and try to like squeeze as much dynamic range as I can out of this camera. But this camera I think is only rated at 11 stops maybe, don't quote me on that. But there's not really that much dynamic range on this camera anyways. And what I've found, when you take all of that contrast away, sometimes it can actually introduce artifacting and noise. For all the new footage that I've been shooting on this GH3, I've actually been keeping the contrast and saturation just where they are by default and only turning the sharpness and noise reduction down. So I'm just keeping that contrast and saturation baked in because that'll actually help me judge my exposure better since there really isn't that many exposure tools on this GH3 except for a histogram. And it's gonna keep my shadows from being too muddy. So that's something that I've actually been doing a lot more and I'm shooting in standard now instead of natural because I actually like how the skin tones look. So who is this Panasonic GH3 for and is it still worth it to pick up in 2022? Well, I think this is a great camera for any beginner filmmaker who's on a really tight budget but still wants a lot of professional features. What you have to understand is that this is a flagship camera. Yes, it's old and it's dated, but when this came out, this was the flagship camera from Panasonic. Whereas if you bought something like a uh, Canon M50, that isn't necessarily a flagship camera from Canon. And so it doesn't have a lot of professional features that this GH3 would have, like weather sealing, a headphone jack, professional codex. That's who I think it's for, people who are on a budget but still want a lot of pro features, and definitely people who are okay with with overcoming some of the downfalls of this camera. You're not gonna get 4K, you're not gonna get IBIS, you're not gonna get great autofocus. But 4K doesn't really matter as long as you light your stuff well. IBIS doesn't really matter as long as you have a gimbal. And if you're just doing videos like this where you're talking to the camera on YouTube, you don't really need autofocus for this type of stuff. You could just get a wireless shutter remote and just set it up so that the shutter button is your record button as well as your focus, which is what I do, and just put a wireless shutter remote on this thing. Then you can have it as far away from you as you want, set your focus point, and then you can go away from your camera, half press it to focus on yourself, and then full press to start recording. So there's a lot of workarounds that you can do with this camera and you can still make it look good. I actually have a bunch of other YouTube videos about the GH3. This is one of my favorites and this is a playlist with all of them. So you can go check those out. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this video and until next time, I'll see you all later. Bye.